Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to secure a VPS. Now, this is very important to do, no matter what kind of property you're going to have on the web. It doesn't matter if it's a static HTML page, if it's gonna be some kind of online service, or if it's just going to be an Iranian TLS proxy for Signal users. So I've seen videos in the past where people show how to set up a VPS and they skip all of the very basic things to secure it. Uh, I don't know if they're just doing it off camera or what, but I'm going to cover pretty much everything that you can do, except for some like really complicated over the top things to make your VPS secure, like kernel hardening and things like that. Um, so anyway, the first thing you're gonna want to do is choose what kind of OS that you're actually going to use on the VPS. So you're obviously gonna want to go with the most secure one that's going to work for what you're doing, uh, which means that Windows Server is going to be out, especially since on Volter, um, the latest version of Windows Server that you can pick is 2016. And if you set up your VPS with a five years outdated Windows OS, you're going to have a bad time. Not to mention that Windows Server tends to cost more, um, not necessarily on Volter, but just in general because of licensing and whatnot. And it uses up more system resources because it's a heavier operating system. And it's also closed source. And whenever you use a closed source OS, somewhere in the world, a penguin cries. So avoid using Windows at all costs um, and just use a Linux distro or better yet, BSD, because that's typically even more secure than Linux, uh, OpenBSD. Just do a little bit of research beforehand to make sure that whatever software you're going to be running on the VPS is compatible with OpenBSD and doesn't have any type of weird performance issues. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to go with Debian because it's quite secure and I'm familiar with it. And obviously, whichever Linux distro you choose to use or BSD that you choose to use, make sure that you're picking the latest one. So once you're done picking your VPS and it's uh, properly provisioned, it's time to SSH into it by just typing SSH root at and then whatever the IP address of that VPS you just got is. You'll then be prompted to enter your root password and then you're going to be logged into the box as root. So the next thing to do is pretty straightforward. In fact, it's the same thing that you would do after logging into any new Linux installation on a desktop. You want to run apt update and apt upgrade to update all of your packages. Um, so now onto the basics of how we can uh, actually start getting into the meat and potatoes of securing our VPS. So the first step for implementing any kind of cybersecurity is to define our threat models. So who or what are we trying to protect this VPS from? For this example, we are trying to protect from hackers that fall into two distinct categories. So there are automated hacks, uh, basically bots that are going to try and brute force their way into the box. And then there are people who are going to be manually trying to break into this box. So maybe they found my domain and they got the IP from doing a ping on it. And now they're trying to pwn the VPS. Uh, so one thing that we can do, which pretty much eliminates the automated hacks by itself, is just disabling the root logins for SSH. Uh, so virtually every Linux VPS has a root user on it. And our IP address is public knowledge because, of course, we want people to actually go to our website. So we're going to have a domain for this and we're going to tell everybody about that domain. But if they just ping our domain, then they can figure out what the IP is. So everybody knows this information and there are hundreds, if not thousands of malicious web crawlers out there that are just looking for new domains on the internet that just got registered and then they are doing automated brute force attempts of their root SSH login. But if you disable SSHing as root, then those web crawlers will be useless, even if they manage to guess your correct root password. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is create a new user on the system and you're also going to want to avoid giving this user any names like admin or administrator because some of the automated web crawlers are designed to try logging in with those names as well. 
And it's also a good idea to avoid using a name that is easily connected to you, uh, like your first name or your common username or whatever. If you have a popular website and a lot of people know about you, they might try that username as well. Uh, so I actually didn't follow this by using uh, a user named Mental Outlaw, uh, but you know, whatever, I think I'll be all right. So go ahead and create that user. Make sure that you add them to the sudoers list because you're still going to need to do some things as root. We just don't want to log in as root to do it. Um, and once you do all of that, go ahead and vim into etsy ssh sshd underscore config. Uh, so this is the configuration file for ssh and you're gonna want to go down to this line here that says permit root login. By default, it's going to say yes. We're going to change that to no. And then right quit. Um, actually, there's one other thing that we're going to uh, change inside of this file. So really, this is more security through obscurity. So you wouldn't want to do something like this just by itself and you know think that you're super secure. But this can help thwart automated scripts. So we're going to change the SSH listening port um, from the default port 22, which everybody knows. Uh, we're going to change that to something that's maybe uh, not really well known. So we're gonna actually make it 55,555. So that's going to be uh, the SSH listening port for this machine. So now we can right quit that and then restart SSH with system CTL restart SSHD. Uh, and there we go. Now, again, this is just security through obscurity. Um, it can help stop scripts, but any hacker that's worth their salt, they can just scan all of the active ports that are on your machine and they can figure out that you've done this. And speaking of scanning ports, we really should make sure that all of the ports that we are not going to be using are disabled. So we can actually run a netstat and we can see all of the currently open ports and their associated services. Uh, there's a few more things that are running on this machine than normal because I have Docker uh, on this box. Remember, this is the one from the TLS proxy video that I just did. But let's go ahead and create some firewall rules to block things that I don't need. Um, so first, we want to list out the IP tables rules that I have in place already. Uh, a lot of these get added whenever you configure your software. So we can do sudo IP tables, capital L and V. Uh, so that's going to show us what I have in place already. Um, so again, a lot of these get added automatically when you configure software. A lot of them got added uh, during my Docker configuration. Let's put in some new rules though. So let's say that this is going to be a website for people to visit. You would want to allow ports 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS traffic respectively. And we also want to add SSH, but remember our SSH is on port uh, 55,555. So your command is gonna be formatted like this, sudo IP tables A input, P, TCP, D port, and then specify the port, J, and then accept. So we'll do that for our SSH, and then we'll do it for HTTP. And finally, we will do it for HTTPS. Um, so now we want to check that our rules actually got added. And so we can see the rules um, right in here. So they all got added uh, right here. We can see them. Uh, we'll actually just write uh, right here rather, because this is where we were adding it to the actual console. Go ahead and add any other specific filters that you need. So you can filter based on IP addresses, address ranges, uh, ports of course, and you can take the action of dropping packets, accepting them, or returning them to another chain of rules. So very flexible uh, IP tables. Uh, so once you have all of those rules, you then need to add one last rule to drop all other packets 
uh, that are trying to go to this box. So it's very important to always have something like this at the end of your firewalls rule. So sudo IP tables, A input, J drop. And there we go. So this is pretty much the basics for securing your VPS. Um, at the core of all of this, we are using software that defaults to being as secure as possible, hence choosing Linux over Windows. And then we are going to eliminate as many security threats as possible. Uh, and pretty much the way that we are gonna do that is just disabling users that we don't really need like root, uh, disabling ports that we don't need, uninstalling any software that we don't need. Uh, luckily with Debian, it doesn't really come with a whole lot of bloat. You might also wanna use more simplistic alternatives to some software that comes by default. So for example, do as instead of sudo uh, would also be another good thing that you can put with this. But of course that assumes that somebody's already getting access to your box in order to use um, sudo or do as, which <laughs> we're pretty much making that not so that it's not going to happen already. But you're going to want to apply these steps to all software that is going to be running in your stack on this VPS. So uh, for example, if you were going to install a MySQL database, there are default users like an anonymous user and I think a test user that gets created and there's also default tables that get created. You're gonna to want to delete all of those when you're setting up MySQL. Uh, always make sure that you're running the latest version of your software and when a new version comes out, Go ahead and install it and then remove any traces of the old one to avoid any type of downgrade attacks. Um, and then should also obviously go without saying, but use a good password. Use very strong passwords for your SSH login uh, or any other users that you need to create on your system. And if this is going to be a small business or an enterprise VPS where multiple people are accessing it, you should also set up a password policy on the system so that users are going to be forced to have a certain number of characters and a certain variety of characters in their passwords. Or better yet, you could just disable password authentication altogether and use GPG key-based authentication. Uh, this is generally more secure. And again, it thwarts hackers' attempts to access the box because they won't even be able to brute force it that way. So these are all things that I do to secure my VPSs. Let me know if there's any other things that you do to secure yours in the comment section below.